Are we live? Mm -hmm. Yay! All right, welcome to Christina's Kitchen. I am so glad you all are here because I don't like talking to that thing. I'm just gonna talk to you. We're gonna pretend it's not there. <laughs> but I can't totally pretend it's not there because we do have people who join us on Facebook too. So if you are joining us right now, please comment with who you are, where you're from, and where you're watching from. If you have any questions, hopefully Daniel will see him. If you don't, if he doesn't, just keep asking it until someone sees it, and we'll try to answer it for you. So, but I am so glad you guys are here in person because that's so much nicer to see real people. <laughs> and we are gonna have fun today. Um, our class today is how to use tofu. That's one of those weird things that nobody knows what to do with, like, you know, if you just sit there and try to eat it, it tastes like chalk. It really does. Um, there are some people who do like the taste of real tofu, plain tofu with nothing on it. I am not one of them, okay? It has to be good. It has to have flavor, um, or else I won't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Um, what is tofu made of? That's a good question. Let me give a message to somebody over here. Natalia, <laughs> are you busy? Not exactly. Can you be my gopher today? What's that? <laughs> this is what Matthew usually does. Run back to the kitchen when I forget something. <laughs> it means you go for things. <laughs> it means you go for this and go for that. Oh, that, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, that was the five minute timer. Uh, that means it needs to be stirred. Okay. And then poke it and probably give it like two or three more minutes. Okay. We want to know what it is. <laughs> Broccoli. <laughs> the green stuff. So Natalia, what I need you to do is find serving spoons for everything over there. Thank you. All right, now I'm going to answer your question. What is tofu made out of? What is it? Uh, tofu is actually considered a whole food um, because it has very little processing um, and it is made out of soybeans. And a lot of people are scared of soybeans because soybeans kind of have this bad rap, which we will talk about that in a little bit. Um, and if I forget to talk about it, some of you better remind me, okay? Um, but uh, I've actually made my own tofu before. Uh, it's fairly simple. You just take the whole soybeans and you soak them. And when they're done soaked, you put them in the blender with water and you blend them up until it's almost like raw soy milk. Um, and then you strain it, and that is soy milk, okay? That's how they make soy milk. Uh, then you just cook it, of course, because you don't eat raw soybeans. But once you bring it to a boil, if you don't want it as soy milk and you want it as tofu, then you add a curdling agent. And uh, uh, there are a number of different curdling agents. Lemon juice is a curdling agent. Epsom salt is a curdling agent. It doesn't take very much. Um, there are calcium, different types of calcium, different types of magnesium are all curdling agents. And when you put that in, it curdles, just like regular milk curdles. Like. <laughs> and so you take those uh, curds and you strain them with a cheesecloth, squeeze it out and put it into a press. And you press it for several hours to overnight. And that's tofu. And depending on how firm they press it, and what, how strong of a curdling agent they use will decide if it's silken tofu or firm tofu or extra firm tofu or you know all the different types of tofu that there are. Um, so that is how tofu is made. A uh, fairly simple process. It's been done for over a thousand years. Uh, it came from the Asian countries uh, where, and ironically, I'm just gonna throw this in there right now. The countries that tofu is native to that consume the most tofu are the ones that have the least instance of breast cancer. Uh, and it's kind of interesting because that's one of the things that soybeans are supposedly bad for is breast cancer because they're supposed to be high in estrogen. So we will talk about that in a little while if you remind me. Um, but anyway, that is what tofu is. So you'll find it a lot of uh, Asian cuisine. Um, of course, the most common one that you see, of course, is like, you know, in stir fry, right? Um, tofu is at most Chinese restaurants, they have an option where you can get uh, tofu in your stir fry vegetables and noodles. Um, but uh, there are a number of other ways that it's used. Today, I'm only going to talk to you about five ways to use tofu. There's a whole lot more than that out there. And if I have time, I might throw in a few hints and tips on other ways you can use tofu besides the five. 
Okay. So, I did not have time to make a giant plate of stir fry for you to eat your stir fried tofu with. But I at least wanted to steam some broccoli. Bring it up here. Um, I at least wanted to steam some broccoli so you had some kind of veggie to eat with it. Um, and I'm going to season it up a little bit as if it's stir fry so it will go with your stir fried tofu. This is coconut aminos. Uh, a lot of people like it because it is um, less processed than your regular soy sauce. Um, it is made from the sap of the coconut palm tree. And if someone is allergic to soy, it's a soy sauce that they can still use, uh, which is nice. Obviously, um, welcome, come back in. <laughs> Obviously, uh, if uh, you're allergic to soy, you should not eat tofu. So <laughs> this is a tofu class. So there's soy in our class. But that's what this is. Um, it is not as salty as soy sauce, and it's actually a little bit sweeter. It's not quite as strong of a flavor, but I really like the flavor on vegetables. So we're going to put a little bit of that on our broccoli. It's not as salty. No, it has a naturally sweet flavor, um, and it's because the sap of the coconut palm tree is naturally sweet. If you've ever seen coconut sugar, coconut sugar is made from the same sap of the coconut palm tree as coconut aminos is. So you get to sample a whole bunch of different kinds of tofu today. Ooh. So this one, I'm going to put it here. It's perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. We'll just do this. Okay, this one is the stir fried tofu. So, and I will be showing you how to make it, but that's what's in this bowl here. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> She's gonna make everybody on Facebook hungry. <laughs> you see that over there, Charlotte? Oh, yeah. All right, so that's the first one there. This one is the barbecue tofu. And if you don't like the flavor, it's just because it's my own homemade barbecue sauce. But you can put whatever barbecue sauce you like on it. And it's just the texture you're after, right? So that's what that is. And then we have the deluxe tofu scramble. That's what's in this pot here. And we have the tofu sour cream, which that goes really good on broccoli. And baked potatoes. <laughs> it also works as salad dressing. So, anyway, um, I also have this is just a dairy free cheese. If you want any of it on your tofu scramble, there is also fresh homemade salsa if you want that with your tofu scramble, if you like it that way. Um, and there's broccoli and there's salad. And yeah, you have sour cream instead of salad dressing today. So, any questions? You ready to try all this weird stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but the tofu sour cream is one uh, pack of this. All of the recipes today were made with this tofu. Um, this I get at Kroger, and uh, if they don't have it at the Kroger here, they have it in Somerset. They also have a similar kind of this at Walmart. Um, and when I don't teach a cooking class here what made on tofu, I usually have to sell it here, but I think I only have one left in the fridge. Cause I used all my supply of tofu to make the glass today. Um, but we do, we do sell it here as well. Um, but this is uh, what I call water pack tofu because there is another kind of tofu that's shelf stable that's in a cardboard box that sits on the shelf. Um, and I do not use that because it's a totally different texture. I love the texture and consistency of this kind. Um, this is extra firm. Uh, tofu. So you'll notice on all of your recipes it calls for either firm or extra firm. And I think one of yours is only extra firm, the stir fry tofu. Uh, if you get the soft or silken tofu, that one is only good for desserts. That's the only thing it's good for. Or you might be able to use it in the sour cream. Uh, but you would need to adjust the water in it because it's more watery than your firm is. Um, but it's good for stuff like if you wanted to make a tofu peanut butter 
frozen pie or something like that or a tofu mousse or um, there's all different dessert things you can do with tofu or you can put it in smoothies um, if you're trying to add protein to your smoothie you can just put the silken tofu in a smoothie um, the silken tofu has a softer texture blends up smoother um, and so it's nicer for that type of stuff but that's the only time you would use silken tofu and I don't do any of those things I just mentioned, so I never buy it. <laughs> so, um, I tend to like the more savory tofu uh, recipes, so, um, and my favorite is the extra firm. And every batch of tofu varies. Some are softer than others, so even within the exact same brand, the exact same tofu, you will notice a little bit of varying differences. Um, but the other thing I want to warn you about on tofu is that if you freeze the tofu, whether it be because you stuck it in the back of your refrigerator and it froze back there, or if you froze it on purpose, it changes the texture of the tofu. Um, it actually makes it more um, spongy and more chewy, um, which gives it almost like a more of a meaty texture. And if you like that texture, it'd be perfect for your barbecue tofu. Um, or you can even do it for your stir fry tofu. But if you don't want that texture and your tofu froze in the back of the fridge, <laughs> you're gonna wanna find another block of tofu. <laughs> so just to warn you on that, where it's like, oh, it's gonna expire, I'll just throw it in the freezer and use it later. No, the texture is going to change. Um, so that's just one word of caution. When you buy tofu in the store, always look at the expiration date um, most of your stores will have a month or even two months uh, to the future expiration date. And even if you're using it like the day of or um, even the week after the expiration date, it's usually okay. Um, but you have to make sure it maintains a constant temperature. You can have spoiled tofu that hasn't expired yet. Or you can have tofu that's a couple weeks past the expiration date, it's still perfectly good. Uh, it depends on your refrigerator, depends on how cold you kept it from the grocery store to your house. Um, and especially in the summertime, that makes a difference. Uh, and um, the, just how well it was kept at the grocery store. Uh, tofu is sensitive to getting too warm. How do you know if it's spoiled? If it smells like sour milk, it is going bad. It smells like manure, you'll wish you hadn't smelled it. Uh, <laughs> rotten tofu smells like manure. It really does. It smells like a garbage can. Like, <laughs> and the same goes with rotten soy milk. Um, so if you ever wonder if your soy milk went bad in the fridge, all you have to do is smell it. If it smells like beans, then it's fine. But if it smells like sour milk or manure, you know it's, it's gone. Just get rid of it, try, and try another one. So whenever I open tofu, that's the first thing I do, is I dump the water out, um, I rinse it, and then I smell it. Um, no matter what the date is, I just always smell it. Um, I've had some bad experiences with <laughs> smelly tofu. <laughs> so, um, the tofu sour cream is one block of the organic firm or extra firm tofu. Three quarters of a cup of cashews. Those are raw cashews or roasted. You can use either one. If you're using raw, you want to wash them first. Um, and then it just has water, lemon juice, salt, onion powder, and I put a little bit of sorghum molasses in it, but that's completely optional, depending on what you're using it for. Um, the, what that does is it helps cut the strong lemon flavor and it helps cut the beady flavor in your soybeans. Um, but, the main thing that I use the tofu sour cream for in the restaurant is our enchiladas. That's our secret ingredient and our enchiladas that makes it taste really good. And when I put it in the enchiladas, I don't bother to put the sorghum molasses in because it doesn't need it. Um, but uh, because there's tofu in it, when it cooks in the enchiladas, it actually puffs up. If any of you have eaten our enchiladas, you'll notice it has like a cheesy texture to it. And that's the tofu that actually makes it do that. Um, and uh, I haven't seen it do that if you just did a, a cashew sour cream or any other sour cream. <coughs> but um, that's it.
Use up to blend until smooth and pour it in jars and stick it in the fridge. It's good for a week. Uh, you can put it immediately into your enchiladas if that's what you're going to use it for, or you can let it chill. But if you're going to eat it, you want it to chill first because it's really liquidy when you first make it and it takes a few hours um, to set up. I made it at noon today, so it took about six hours to set up to the nice thickness that it is right now. So any questions on the sour cream? Daniel, were you able to put the recipes online for anyone watching They're on Facebook? Online. They're online. Marvelous. Online. Is anyone watching? Like, I haven't heard a single comment from you. Oh, yes. We have. <laughs> Darlene is watching and saying hello and she wants you to deliver. Hi, Darlene. Sorry I can't deliver to you. It's a long way. <laughs> and Christina Hollis is watching. Hi, Christina. And Nancy Presley and... Mindy Allen from Oneida and David Shell from London. And Helga says hello from Denmark. Wow. Well, welcome. We're glad all of you can join us. Thank you, Daniel, for letting us know there's people online. And I'm glad you've got the recipes on there so they can see them too. <coughs> all right. So we're going to talk about the barbecue tofu. I'm going to tell you I need two large plates. Um, and I'm also going to need a basin or something to dump my water in. So the barbecued tofu is the only one of these recipes that you actually have to get rid of some water out of the tofu. Tofu is naturally very wet. Obviously, it's packed in the water, so it's saturated wet. Um, and uh, when Natalia comes back here in a second, I will show you what we're going to do for the barbecued tofu. Now everybody's had a chance to try it. How many of you like the barbecued tofu? Most of you. Good. Stir fry is my favorite. The stir fry is my favorite too, but they're all good. <laughs> stir fry is definitely my favorite. Um, Yay! Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So I'm going to show you how to press the tofu for the barbecue tofu. Because you actually need to get rid of some of the water out of it. So first we're going to drain the water. I'm going to need that blue water jug. It's sitting by the sink right here behind me. Actually, by the coffee pot there. Because I need to rinse this out. I forget I don't have my kitchen sink. Thank you. There should be water on hand. Okay, so we're going to rinse this off. After I rinse it, when I smell it, which it smells like beans, like it's supposed to. So here's how you press a tofu without a tofu press. We're gonna get some of this water out of it. So I put it on a plate, put my second plate on top, and which one's my heaviest pot? Probably this one. There. <laughs> There's my tofu press. <laughs> So what I'm doing is I'm pressing the, some of the water out of the tofu and they actually say for ideally you want to leave it for 30 minutes. And once it's sat for 30 minutes, like there will be a puddle of water in that plate, like a good sized puddle of water. Um, I usually check after 20 minutes, dump the water out and then let it finish pressing so the rest of the water can get out. But uh, that's how we press it. Um, so while that is pressing, uh, we're going to do one of the other ones. I want to show you how to do the ricotta. How many of you were here when I did the ricotta? Have all of you seen it? Okay. How many of you were here when I did stuffed shells? You were here for stuffed shells? Okay. So about half of you were here for stuffed shells. Okay. So the stuffed shells was stuffed with my tofu ricotta filling. Um, and it's very simple to make. And it actually says on there, doesn't it say to like squeeze out some of the water in cheesecloth? You don't have to squeeze very much out. You can just squeeze it with your hands a little bit like this. Because you don't need all the water out. You can see the water come out. Look at that. There 
we go. And then you just throw in a bowl. And then I just mash it with my fingers. Of course, I've got gloves on today, so I can. Look at the texture there. You see the texture of it? It's almost like a cottage cheese texture uh, when it's mashed up. Very interesting. Of course, this is the extra firm tofu again. We prefer your ricotta cheese over the traditional cheese. My grandma says the same thing. My grandma says that she would rather have tofu ricotta cheese in her lasagna than regular ricotta cheese. And she's not dairy free by any means. Um, but she just likes the, likes the flavor of it and the texture. So there's my my mashed tofu, which of course you can also use a potato masher. Can you see in there? And it's super easy to fix. Oh, it's so easy. No cooking at all. Okay, I'm going to do this. Someone else is going to have to get the phone. So, so tell me what goes in the ricotta. Since you all have the recipe, my hands are all dirty, so I can't touch them. Anyone have the recipe there? Salt. Salt. Okay. Now you're. I'm gonna make you do math because what I gave you was two blocks, and I just did one. One teaspoon. <laughs> so I have a recipe. So one teaspoon of salt. Four teaspoons of dried basil. All right, and we're half in the recipe, so we want two teaspoons of basil. And what else? Half a teaspoon of garlic powder. All right, there's our basil. Put it back on here. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> alright, what else goes in here? I've got garlic. One teaspoon, One teaspoon onion? Yes. <laughs> One tablespoon. Uh -oh. That's how I measure. <laughs> you know how sticky and gooey sorghum molasses is? It's like honey. You try to put it on a tablespoon measuring spoon and it all stays. Okay, what else? One tablespoon of lemon juice. One tablespoon of lemon juice, all right. And that's it, right? There's nothing else that goes in here? Okay, the spinach is optional. So we're not going to do it today because you all know how to do spinach. So there it is. If you don't, if you aren't doing the spinach, you're done. And if you are doing the spinach, you just steam a few leaves of spinach and mix it in. How hard is that? <laughs> all ready to go. And you can use that in lasagna. You can use that for stuffed shells. It's good for eggplant lasagna. Um, anything you would use ricotta cheese in, it's all ready to go. So there's our tofu ricotta. And if you ever want to try it, just come here while I'm serving lasagna, which will probably be next week. <laughs> All right. So next one um, is stir-fried tofu. So we're going to do that one next. Um, or do I want to do the other one? Yeah, let's do stir-fried tofu. So with the stir-fried tofu, I don't bother pressing it like I am for the barbecue tofu. 
Um, I actually want the moisture in, so I don't squeeze it, I don't press it. I do let it drain because I don't like want copious amounts of uh, water in my tofu, but I do want some. I'm not afraid of the water for this one. And you'll notice most recipes for stir-fry tofu, they want you to press it. They want you to get all the moisture out of it. Um, but the reason I don't is because I use a different method for cooking it. And the method for cooking this one is a marination method. It's where you're actually cooking it in so much liquid that the tofu cubes are almost submerged. Um, and what that does is that cooks the flavor all the way into the center of the tofu and not just on the outside. Um, when you press it, obviously for the barbecue tofu it's fine because we cut it in really thin pieces, right? So the, the seasoning was able to soak all the way through. But for your big stir fry chunks, uh, you're not going to be able to get the seasoning all the way through unless it can be completely submerged in liquid. So um, that's why I'm not pressing it. And it's going to be a totally different method. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to cut it in two chunks. So I do four slices across and then I cut it in half so it's the half thickness. And then cut it the other way so that they're cubes. So I have perfect stir fry cubes. Um, and then I'm going to throw these in a bowl. And I usually just let them sit in the bowl. I don't bother putting any seasonings or anything on them. Um, and while they sit, they slowly drain a little bit of the excess water. Um, I want some of that excess water drained out of it um before i start cooking it i just don't want it mashed so i'm gonna get rid of this again because now i need my my countertop is too small i got too many bowls out of here there we go okay how long has that been sitting there Five Seven minutes? Seven. Seven minutes? I'm teasing. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put a different pot on it because I'm going to need this pot. Where am I? Which pot am I going to use? Eeny, meeny, miny, miny. No, I'm not going to use that pot. That pot can sit right there. It's perfectly fine. So before I start cooking this, I want to talk to you about pots. And I'm going to switch my gloves out for clean gloves now because these are covered in tofu. Not that that's a bad thing. Now my hands are wet. Uh, ever put on gloves on wet hands? Yeah, it's a nightmare. It is a nightmare. At least they're mediums. Um, so, you'll notice I have a whole bunch of pots out here. We noticed. <laughs> I do not recommend that you have to buy all these pots, but I want to tell you what they are so you can make a wise decision as to which pot you want to buy. Okay, this one here is obviously a stainless steel pot. It's just a plain stainless steel very thick bottom pot. It's uh, really, really nice for cooking a lot of things because it's not going to burn. Um, then of course you have the cast iron skillet, right? Uh, cast iron skillet has to be seasoned, but as long as you keep it seasoned, you can do a lot with it. It's going to basically be almost like a nonstick skillet. Um, if you try to do stir fried tofu in that pot, the tofu will leave its brown edge on the bottom of the pot and never come off. Okay, so you'll just end up with, you'll keep browning the tofu, but the brown will stay and you keep ending up with these soft tofu chunks that just get smaller and smaller, right? Um, <laughs> it doesn't taste very good. So I do not recommend stainless steel for stir fry tofu. This one will work. You want something that's nonstick. So your cast iron skill will work if it's well seasoned. If it's not seasoned, it's going to do the same thing as your stainless steel pot. Uh, another type of uh, pan that you can use, and this one is uh, very common. This is actually a ceramic wok is what this is. 
but it's very lightweight and it's very thin. Uh, it's nice if you're looking for something cheap that doesn't last very long because this coating is so thin that if you use it a lot, it might last you a month. Um, if you use it, you know, maybe like once a week, you might get it to last six months, um, but it's not gonna last much longer than that. Uh, so it's nice to have that ceramic coating, but this is a cheap one. You get what you pay for with ceramic pots. Um, the coating doesn't last very long. Then this one here, this pot here actually cost more than that one did. Uh, this is also a ceramic skillet. Um, it's fairly heavy duty. It's got a nice heavy duty bottom. Um, and it works fairly well, especially for like stir fried tofu. I like the fact that ceramic doesn't stick as bad. It's not 100% non-stick. It's not like Teflon or anything like that, but it doesn't stick as bad. Um, and so you can actually stir fry your tofu in this and it will work okay. Um, the thing I have noticed about this particular ceramic pot and that one both is that it conducts heat very well and it can burn your tofu faster. So you do have to stir it more often and you need to turn your burner down a little bit lower heat uh, if you're going to use the ceramic. And you also have to make sure that once it runs out of liquid that you keep a close eye on it because that's when it'll burn. Um, but that is another option um, for a non-stick. And uh, this is a relatively new um, pan that I recently got. It's not like your normal Teflon. It is a non-stick skillet. Um, it's the most expensive pan on this table. <laughs> Costs a lot more. Um, but it's a heavy duty uh, non-stick that is not gonna peel up and get into your food. Um, it also does not have, um, what was it? That was in non-stick. I'm trying to remember which metal it was. There was a heavy metal that was in it. Um, it does not have it in it, but um, this one is called Thermal Point. It's the name of the pan. And uh, I really, really like it. And I will say that your pan does make a difference in your end product for stir fried tofu. Um, every single pan is going to turn your tofu a different color, different shade of brown, um, and some are going to stick more than others. So um, my two top favorites right now currently are these two. And second would be uh, ceramic um, for options of trying to keep your stir fried tofu for, from not sticking. So um, this one does not work on my hot plate, so I'm not going to demonstrate with it because it won't work on this. <laughs> so these are the two that will work on this. Um, which one do you want to see me use? Yes, sir. We're going to do it. So cast iron, of course, takes longer to heat up. So it's going to take a little while to get that heated up well. You want to make sure it's heated thoroughly before you put your tofu in. Um, and you want to make sure you have your ingredients ready to go the instant the tofu goes in there. So uh, you will need a tiny bit of olive oil initially just to put a little coating on the bottom before your wet tofu gets in there just so it doesn't stick initially. After that, you shouldn't need any more oil. Um, so for my ingredients for tofu, uh, I've got approximate measurements there on the stir fry tofu. You can totally adjust it to your taste. If you don't have coconut aminos and you don't have tamari and you don't know what those are, whatever, you can use regular soy sauce. It's perfectly fine. You just need to adjust it to your taste. Uh, I like to use a little bit of uh, tamari. It's basically a super concentrated soy sauce, but it's gluten free because a lot of soy sauce is made with wheat. Um, and because it's super concentrated, you don't have to use very much. Uh, it gives a nice strong soy sauce flavor and I find that it counteracts the coconut amino. So I do mostly coconut aminos with just a tiny bit of tamari and that gives a nice balance of flavor. Uh, and then I put sorghum molasses in if you don't have sorghum molasses, you can use honey or sugar or whatever sweetener you want to use. I prefer a wet sweetener for this because I'm wanting liquid. Um, so the more liquid, actually the better in this recipe. 
And let's see. Did I tell you I'm gonna need the salt shaker? The silver one that we use. And this onion powder here. It's getting warm, but it's not quite warm enough yet. And I need a little bit of sticky. Just a little bit of water in there, not too much. It's starting to smoke. You see that? It's almost ready. <laughs> the only reason it smokes is because when it was seasoned, there was a little bit. I always put a little bit of oil on the outside when I put it away to keep it from rusting. Um, so that's what's smoking. It looks like it's good. When in doubt, if you don't know if it's done enough, you put a drop of water on it. That's how you know. If it sizzles, it's warm. All right, so we're just gonna put a, ton, a little bit of oil on there. And I love these little bottles with the tiny, tiny little um, hole in it because it's easier to dispense a tiny bit of oil. Christmas is going to complain because I took the pot off. Um, I'm gonna drain the rest of my water out of this now. Last one. Okay, am I ready with everything? I think. All right, so watch out when you put the tofu on because there's water in the tofu and there's oil there. And it does splatter. So <laughs> look out, Matthew. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to put my coconut aminos in first. A little bit of tamari. How much lemon juice am I supposed to put in here? And then what? Sorghum molasses. I put all my liquid stuff in first. The tablespoon of sorghum, right? I think I was keeping. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it taste good. All right, so we're just going to get that into the liquid here. And then it's actually, this recipe is better if you do two blocks instead of just one because you get more water in that way and it can marinate the tofu even better than with one block. Um, what seasonings go in here now? Now I got my wet stuff in. Salt? How much? Teaspoon? I'm gonna guess. Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon, okay, that's fine. How's that? All right, and onion powder? One teaspoon of that? Okay, we can guess that too. Did you measure anything? Yes, I measured everything. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> How much garlic? Any garlic? No garlic. Okay. So everything's in there now? We have it all in? Okay, so the secret of stirring this is making sure that you don't break your clumps of <laughs> tofu into little bits. Um, so you're going to want, it would actually be better. Natalia, could you get me um, a flat bottom wood spoon? Better use a flat spoon because then you can actually flip it yeah, like a pancake right flipper. Oh, I have it here. Never mind. Sorry. I'm blind. Thank you. So I've got this on medium high. It's boiling nicely, so I'm not going to bother turning it all the way up to high. I want it to boil off. So the idea is. 
you want to marinate the tofu in as much of the liquid as you can, but then you're boiling the liquid off and leaving all the flavor in the tofu. So it usually takes about five minutes or so. Well, if it's one block, it takes five minutes or less to boil it all the water. If it's four blocks, it takes about 10 minutes to boil all the water because you have four blocks worth of water that you're, you're boiling out. Um, no, you just turn it down to medium, but this is actually doing nicely. Um, just turn it down to medium once it starts boiling, and you're just going to let it boil until it's all out. And then, like I said, it boils the fastest out if it's only one block of tofu, which is why I like doing two blocks. Because um, then you'll have more, more liquid. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to make you stand here and watch me, sit here and watch me stir this for 10 minutes while it's boiling the liquid out. Once the liquid is out, that's when you really have to start stirring it. Because you don't want it to burn. You want it to nicely brown on all sides, but you don't want it burnt. Turn this down. mistake of buying firm tofu instead of extra firm for this and my cubes crumbled and ended up looking like scrambled tofu instead of nice solid stir-fry chunks like I wanted. Um, I was very 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 sad so uh, you really do have to use extra firm for this one to that's give it that's, this is extra firm yes. The other brand I like um, if I don't have the Kroger uh, organic brand is the Nasoyu brand. It's also organic um, and it has a really good firm tofu. That holds up really nice for this. Um, some of your other tofus are more watery and they don't hold together as nice. Dry liquid is almost gone now. Which is what we want. Aren't they pretty? Look at that. You guys smell this? <laughs> I only make this once a month here at the restaurant because it takes us so long to chop all the veggies and cook everything else for a stir fry. But if you have not yet tried our stir fry day, you are missing out. <laughs> Sorry, Matthew. He wants it all. He doesn't want you to come. No. I didn't say that. <laughs> we had stir fry last Wednesday. And uh, we made extra so that we could get some too. So we wouldn't be wiped out by everybody else. So the liquid is completely gone now, so it's just browning the tofu. And normally when I'm making it, I'm usually doing six other things at once because, you know, I have four burners and I use them all at the same time. Um, so the main thing is remembering to stir them. And if I'm busy doing something else, I set a timer for like one minute or so to remember to stir these because they look beautiful, but they can be black on the bottom and you wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> So, you do have to make sure and stir them often. This is easy a day, it's the only burner on. They're browning so nicely. Yeah, all the liquid's gone, I'm just browning them. Yeah. And you can brown them to whatever stage you want. If you just want them real light brown and you want more soft, they're ready to go right now. Um, if you want them a little bit more crunchy, then you just brown them a little bit more before you serve them. And they will firm up more as they cool. So do keep that in mind.
What's that? You let them pull the blister that you said? Yeah, with this, with stir fry, I actually keep it in a separate bowl until I'm ready to serve it. Um, so I will just, when they're done, I don't have a container to put them in. Can I have a glass container to put these in? Glass bowl? Um, when, uh, when these are done, I'll put them directly into a serving dish or whatever, and I actually serve them separately. Um, that way everybody can put on their much, as much or as little tofu as they want on their own stir fry. When we serve it here, I keep it permanently in a separate container in the fridge, and we just count to make sure everybody gets the same amount of tofu. Hmm, one of the round bowls? Because once you put it in the vegetables, it'll start getting soggy, and I like the, I like the crispy flavor. It doesn't have a lot of flavor, yes. And I, uh, I have also tried that. In fact, I tried it as an experiment here at the restaurant. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. I tried an experiment here at the restaurant. I, I started out making this kind. And then I told all my stir fry customers, I was like, okay, I'm going to try a new recipe now. And I did that where I put cornstarch and seasonings on the outside and I did it in the air fryer and put it on. After about twice or three times of doing it, they were like, we don't like this tofu. Will you switch back to your other kind? <laughs> you have the crunch, but there's no flavor inside. It's just like chalk inside. Yeah, it's not good. This is done. And of course, uh, I forgot to grab a hot pad, but this will work as a hot pad. Aren't those pretty? Daniel, can they see them? They need to see. Are you making you hungry yet? <laughs> I think everyone on Facebook is sorry. <laughs> they aren't here. <laughs> so you'll notice the ones over there are more dark colored now. They actually get darker as they cool. So they're really, really light, light color right now, but they will slowly darken as they sit and cool. Oh, those are really good on Shiskabok. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Um, you probably want to let them cool a little bit so that they don't fall apart when you stick it on the stick right now it's hot and they'll fall apart easy but as they cool they solidify and you can just yeah and then just put them on the grill yes they're very good all right so what time is it or do i even want to know all right what do you guys want to see what's under your plate you want to see what's under my plate that's the barbecue look at the look how much water came out of this thing really really simple to do and does not take long because it's done in the oven and so you can just throw it in the oven let it bake while you're preparing the rest of your meal and then it's ready to serve um, all you have to do is uh, take your tofu and put it in thin slices I should move my bowl so you can actually see what I'm doing can you see Jim? No. <laughs> let's move something how's that can you see that Now June can see. What about the rest of you over here? You probably can't see anything either. You can see? <laughs> what do I need to move for you? How's that? Is that better? <laughs> All right. Okay. So you just want thin little slices of tofu. And of course, we didn't have a full 30 minutes to let it sit. The longer it sits, the better on this one. There's my. 
Hey, yay! Good job, Joshua. All right, so you just throw those in a bowl. Um, Natalia, I'm gonna need one of those cookie sheets that were in the sink. I think your mom's washing them. So there's our tofu, and then what goes on it? A little bit of olive oil? Like how much? Tablespoon. Tablespoon? Okay, I'm gonna guess. All right. Tablespoon of cornstarch. I don't have a dry tablespoon. Do I have a dry teaspoon? Yes, perfect. And I need the oil spray for it. Yes, um, good night. You said one tablespoon, right? How many teaspoons are in a tablespoon? Three. Three. Okay, good. All right, so that's one tablespoon of cornstarch. What else? Teaspoon of salt, I'm going to guess. Half a teaspoon. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Perfect. Onion powder. Was. Here it is. Teaspoon? We're just going to stir this up together a little bit and this is kind of similar to what you were uh, saying about putting the cornstarch on the outside only difference is these are such thin slices that even though we are putting a little bit of cornstarch on the outside to help them cook up a little bit we are they're not so thick the salt can't penetrate all the way through and then of course you're putting so much barbecue sauce on it <laughs> It finishes cooking through, right? I can't see what you're doing. I am just stirring up the seasonings together. So there they are. So then I'm just going to take my pan, put a little spray on it so it doesn't stick. And we're just going to put this tofu directly on the pan. We're just going to lay them out. So you probably noticed I did one teaspoon at a time instead of a tablespoon. And when I put it in, I sprinkled it across the entire thing instead of just plopping it in one spot. There was a reason for that. Um, that does help it distribute a little bit more. Um, and then just very, very gently with your hands. Don't use a spoon because it just disintegrates it. But if you gently use your hands, you can just gently coat it in. Uh, some people say put it in a bag. I tried the bag method, but all the pieces start breaking. So I was like, no. Nah bowl it is. I'm, I'm gentler with my hands than I am in a bag. So there's that. And then I just um, take a little bit more salt and sprinkle it on top. And that just simply goes in the oven for 20 minutes, just like that at 400 degrees. And after 20 minutes, it's nicely golden. It's nice and chewy. And then you just put whatever barbecue sauce you want on it, stick it back in the oven for 10 minutes and it's ready to serve. And uh, you can serve it immediately, nice and hot, or you can let it chill, use it the next day for sandwiches or put it on salads or whatever you want. Um, it makes a great addition to your meal. So that one is very fast, a uh, very easy way to add a protein dish to your menu. All right, so my last one is the tofu scramble. Um, can you cut that open? I'll give you the sink. I'm gonna chop the veggies. Except where did I put the? Oh, I gave you the knife. You need it. Go ahead and poke it, and then I want it back. <laughs> I only brought one knife out here. <laughs> so most of you have had our our plain scrambled tofu. How did you like the scrambled tofu with the added veggies in it? It adds a lot of flavor, doesn't it? Um, so I gave you both recipes, you probably saw. 
Um, on page two, there's the regular scrambled tofu with no veggies in it, and then the scrambled tofu deluxe has all the veggies in it. They're basically the same recipe. Um, I'm going to let you break it up. Actually, I need you to break it up on here because I need that for the veggies. What do you know? You're just, <laughs> I'm just here. Just keep it right, I'm going to let that warm up. Um, so, one has the veggies in it, one doesn't. Um, there's a slightly difference in some of the methods of chopping. Like, for instance, if you're doing plain scrambled tofu, you just throw it on the pot, cook it, and it's done in like five minutes. If you're going to do veggies, you want to cook the veggies first and then add the tofu. So Matthew is breaking up the tofu. Can you show him how you're breaking it up, Matthew, please? Just take it and you break it in half. <laughs> you break it in half until you get a block about like that. So you actually want to break it into chunks. You don't want to like mash it with a potato masher. Um, that gives more texture in your uh, scrambled tofu and it's not like this eating powder. Um, so that is, that is a common mistake that's used. I'm telling you I'm going to need the big butcher knife. This little thing is not doing me anything. It's not. Isn't that great? Yeah. Tofu is not fattening. Um, it has some carbohydrates in it, but it also has fiber in it, and it also has protein in it. So it's not uh, one of your highest carb foods like grains are. Um, and it's very low in fat, and it also has a lot of calcium um, and a lot of minerals in it. Thank you so much. I'll be here a lot less time now. So, no, it's not a fattening food. Thank you, Matthew. I'm gonna, let's see, what else goes in the tofu? Isn't there something else that goes in the tofu? I seem to remember something else goes in there. Turmeric. All right, here, Matthew. How much? An eighth of a teaspoon. Can you handle that? What do you have? Like a half a teaspoon. You have a half a teaspoon? I need an eighth of a teaspoon. Should we out? Yes. Yes. Grab me two size medium How long will the barbecue tofu be in the refrigerator? After it's made? Yes. The barbecue tofu should last for a week. Pretty much most of your tofu stuff is a week. Um, maximum on keeping in the fridge. And that's, of course, if you keep it refrigerated. If you're like reheating it, put it back in the fridge, reheat it, put it back in the fridge, it's only going to last for a couple days. But just be careful, like, if you're going to reheat leftovers, just reheat what you're actually going to eat. Yes. You what? You're breaking the rules? Yeah, by standing up. Oh, I don't care. As long as you're okay. You okay? Okay. Thank you. All right. What other veggies go in here besides peppers? I was only supposed to do half a pepper, right? I'm about ready to do a whole one if I don't stop. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's, there's still part of the other quarter. So I haven't used a full three quarters. I just, I just did a keeping half. So it says one small onion, right? Would this count as a small onion or a medium onion? Medium. Small? And it's not small. Okay, then how much did I use of it then? Half of it? Three quarters? All right. If you don't like onion like me, then you just leave it out. <laughs> but the onion does add flavor. Extra onion. Extra onion? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's an onion lover over here. Like extra onion, extra 
Daniel, do we not have any comments or any questions or anything from our Facebook audience? Uh, They're we like had, strangely silent. We, we had some earlier. Uh oh. And now our Facebook Live is glitching. <laughs> um, you can turn, switch it to data if it's my phone. The Wi-Fi is, is watching here. It's it's working again. Okay. All right. I think we got three fourths of an onion now. Is that warm? Oh, it's burning over there. Uh, I thought you were watching it. I'm not watching it. There's nothing <laughs> in it. <laughs> It's closest to you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get this in. Well, I see how you're my punishment. <laughs> Am I spraying you? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> that he needs goggles. <laughs> yes, we do. We'll let that cook for a minute. We're just going to let that cook until the onions and peppers are soft. And then we're going to throw in our seasoning and our tofu and it'll be done. So it's very, very simple, very easy. Uh, scrambled tofu basically takes about 15 minutes at the most from start to finish to make. And that's if you're doing the deluxe one with all the veggies. Um, the simple one takes about five minutes. So uh, it's another one of those quick and easy ways uh, to fix it and help you too. Mm. <laughs> it smells good, doesn't it? <laughs> The smell of cooked onion, wow. If it was up to me, I would just cook all the onion, cook the food, and then pick all the onion out. I don't know why I like onion, but I like the flavor it gives all my food, so I, I still love put it in. <laughs> I love the onion and the flavor. And of course, how long you cook your onion is, just depends on how well you like it. If you like it crunchy, just cook it a little bit and throw it in. If you like it mushy, then cook it a long time. Uh, any other questions? I was going to tell you about the estrogen. Yes, thank you. Um, so, a, a number of years ago, they did some scientific studies into um, soy milk because, well, naturally, soy milk was lowering dairy milk sales. And so it was funded by the dairy industry to do this uh, research. And uh, they discovered that there was something in soybeans called phytoestrogens. And so they were like, aha, there's estrogen in soybeans. So therefore anyone uh, who doesn't want extra estrogen in your body should not eat soy. So men should not eat soy because uh, the estrogens will turn them into girls and women should not eat soy because it'll, they'll get uh, estrogen growing <coughs> breast cancer and, and all this stuff. And uh, so all of a sudden everyone was like, oh, soy's bad, soybeans are bad, let's not eat it. Um, so there was a doctor in Texas. Uh, she was Asian and uh, she, um, but an uh, American citizen. And uh, she said, that there's something wrong with this study. Like, they need some better studies. And so she decided to launch her own study. She worked for a very large hospital in Texas. And they did a study, and it's been a long time since I've read the actual statistics, so I can't remember exactly how many hundreds of women that they studied, but they did a 10-year study on a group of women covering all ethnic groups, all age groups, um, whether they had estrogen sensitive breast cancer or not um, and like I said they followed them over 10 years they monitored what they ate how much soy they got 
and uh, what their um, estrogen levels were and whether or not they got breast cancer or if they already had breast cancer and they were eating soy, if it made it worse versus the ones who didn't and covered all the information. And what they discovered was shocking to science because they discovered that the women who ate soybeans who actually had estrogen sensitive breast cancer had a reduction in the speed that the cancer was growing compared to those who did not eat soy with the same kind of breast cancer. Uh, they also discovered that women who did not have cancer uh, who ate soybeans had a decrease in risk of getting cancer when they were eating soybeans versus those who did not. Uh, so then later on they did other studies on men and discovered that for men it did not increase estrogen levels in their body. Um, it did not turn them into women. Um, not only that, but they discovered it actually decreased the risk of prostate cancer in men. Um, so anyway, you don't have to be afraid of soy. <laughs> Okay, so you want to tell me what uh, seasoning is going here, and we'll throw our last ingredients in. Two cloves of minced garlic. I don't have a mincer, Natalia. Mincer for garlic. What else, since you've gotten the mincer? One teaspoon of salt. Yeah, see? I stole it, sorry. <laughs> okay, a teaspoon of salt, what else? Two teaspoons of onion? You have that? Who has the onion? Do I have that? I have that. Anything else? So I can start hunting for it? Half a teaspoon of Thank you, thank you, thank you. Half teaspoon garlic. I told you that already. So you said two cloves of garlic? We're going to mince this directly in. Is there anything else that goes in here? Lemon juice?
Any other questions before we close out? The tofu sour cream, yes. No. Well, you do have to drain the water in all tofu. Like, like I did, just pour it out, rinse it, and then just put the tofu directly in the blender. Yeah, yeah, and then just blend everything up until smooth. Johnny Miller says, howdy. Hi, Johnny. Yeah, we've had a lot of issues with the internet this evening, so we're going to be putting, hopefully, a, a complete version on YouTube that doesn't break up. If I had done, I would have had you switch it to data. I forgot to warn you of that. Yeah. Sorry, guys, for the internet issues, but I hope you were able to see some of it. <laughs> All right, Daniel, you want to close us out with a word of prayer? Do you want to show them the finished product here? Because this is done. I really like it. I think I can eat that. <laughs> All right. Well, I certainly enjoyed this class, and now I'm 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 kind of jealous of all of you because I'm gonna have to go eat some of this after after the class. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you all have enjoyed it just as much as I have. And uh, why don't we bow our heads again for a word of prayer? Father in heaven, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for this class and for each one who was able to attend and those who are able to watch online. I pray that you will bless us all as we go our separate ways and and bring us back here again for another class soon. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So all the credit goes to Linda for the fact we have this class today because she's been asking me for a tofu class for a long time and so I uh, finally decided to do it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so thank you all for coming. We will have a class again next month. I hope you can join us and uh, hopefully next month we can start on time. So. Yes?